This week in Shazam! Fury of the Gods, the latest DCEU film drops in theaters. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Let me know what did you think about the latest Shazam film and what's your interest in the movie in light of the fact that we know the DCEU is about to come to an end and the DCU is about to start. With that said, let's get started with the good. And right off the bat, this is a fun time at the movies. It maintains that youthful energy of the original film while adding even bigger blockbuster action sequences. And the cast is charming as ever. It just makes for a highly watchable film. It's very easy to digest this film and have a good time. Leading it is, of course, Zachary Levi, who's just so good at playing this man child. On the one hand, he looks like this big superhero guy, but he has the energy of a teenager. <laughs> I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. And it just fits perfectly with what the movie is supposed to be doing. But everyone else is able to keep right up with him and follow the humor, the antics. And so especially like Adam Brody is a great addition to the mix as this adult version of Freddy and they even kind of look just enough that you're like yeah I totally buy into that and then on the other side to it they add in some top-notch actresses to play our team of villain sisters in the film that contrast with the youthful energy of our heroes really nicely because they play it totally straight and they're being menacing with these heroes that are quite goofy it's fun to watch and everyone is just doing a great job with the material. You understand I'm a pediatrician, right? Another positive here is the movie really dives into the lore and builds out this mythology uh, about the wizards and where the powers came from and how the way that they got the powers kind of set up the scenario where someone might not be very happy in the future. And since that ties into our villains, it just feels like a better villain plot than in the first movie. In the first one, it's just a guy who's essentially jealous and bitter, and so he wants powers, and then he gets demons in his eye. It's a fun character. It fit the film that they were making. This one really feels like the mythology, the setup of everything that's happened in the past, combined with the scenario under which Billy becomes Shazam, creates this big gigantic threat in this movie. It's a more compelling threat. The sisters themselves have a much more in-depth backstory. The sisters have different personalities, so there's a little bit more nuance amongst what they're trying to do and their different perspectives of how they should accomplish their goals. It's just a much better villain plot with multiple villains that are kind of more interesting as a group than the villain we got in the first film. And they pose a bigger and more credible threat as they're more passionate about what they're doing. They're more strategic in what they're doing. They are multiple people and not just the one. They understand the mythology greater than the guy in the first film. And so since we have a Shazam family, we need to amplify the threat in this movie absolutely does that. And right along those same lines, because we have the Shazam family, because we have a team of villains who are using all this mythology to do all this stuff and summon creatures. You are very menacing. I just want you to know that. It's a much bigger film with more exciting action set pieces, probably more memorable set pieces. Right off the bat, there's a scenario where the Shazam family has to save the day. And it's like classic superhero stuff that even though we have so many superhero movies coming out, we don't have nearly as many sequences of heroes just saving people as you would expect. And so it's just like real refreshing to have this big set piece of these very naive and foolish heroes saving the day in their childish ways. But then you also get citywide destruction and dragons and creatures and beasts. It's just much bigger than the first movie. It has better villains with a better villain plot that expands the lore while still maintaining all the fun that we had in the first film and keeping a little bit of the heart in there as well. 
there were some things that didn't work so great for me. So let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. And the first one that comes to mind here is the tone. And one of the biggest criticisms of the first Shazam film is there's some pretty jarring tonal shifts in that movie where one scene, Shazam is doing the floss. The next scene, demons are biting off people's heads. And it would do just this really jarring shift from very childish humor to very dark horror elements. The director comes from a horror background and you kind of see a lot of that in the first film where it just feels very jarring. And this movie still kind of has that where there's all kinds of light humor in here. There's also a bunch of really creepy, scary monsters but it feels like it kind of does this. It's not as dark and terrifying in this jarring sense, and it doesn't get quite as goofy and childish, and so the tone as a whole feels more stable and consistent. I still think that it's doing a little bit too much of this from horror monsters to silly humor, but it's not, it, it's better than in the first one. It's more consistent. I saw the movie with a couple of my friends. All three of us said this one did a better job with the tone than the first film did. Next couple things I want to talk about. These aren't directly related to the film. They're just things that need to be discussed in referring to it. First one that comes to mind is that if you haven't had the cameo in this movie spoiled for you yet, get off the internet don't watch television. They put out a, a TV spot that the first shot of the TV spot spoils a major cameo in the film. And the director tweeted out, please don't watch any more marketing for our film. There's something in the marketing that I don't want you to see. And Zachary Re Levi retweeted that because they're just so frustrated that the marketing department and the higher ups decided to spoil this thing in the trailers and have. And I, so for me, the day before I saw the movie, I just opened Instagram and the first image that popped up was this cameo just spoiled for me. I wasn't looking for it. I was actively trying to avoid anything and they don't bury it in the spot. It's literally the first shot is the spoiler in this in this ad. So get off of everything if you don't want it spoiled for you. And having seen the movie, it is an actual spoiler. It is an actual thing that it is unforgivable that they put this in the trailers, in the TV spots, in particular, right at the beginning of it. At the moment, as best I can recall, in the history that I've been running this YouTube channel, I think this is the worst example of the marketing spoiling an important thing in a film. Can't really elaborate without wanting to go to the film, but without wanting to spoil it for you, but I, I just cannot believe that they made that choice. Other thing to talk about here, there's a mid-credit scene and a post-credit scene. Both of them are actual scenes that do something a little bit different. The mid-credit scene kind of ties into the greater DC universe that's being established while delivering some solid humor, Shazam type humor in there as well. So in, in particular, if you're someone that's been watching the DCEU as a whole, that mid credit one is one that you'll probably really enjoy what they're they're doing with it and the humor that they, they do. Uh, it, it's pretty funny. And then the post credit scene, is another one that it's a full scene kind of teasing some stuff, having some fun with some stuff that um, it's a little bit of a deeper cut. Like if you're a big fan of the first Shazam, you have to stay for the one at the very end. After the second one happened, one of the people that I was watching the movie was like, who is that in that? I didn't recognize the what was kind of going on there. So it's a little bit of a deeper cut. So if you're kind of a normie that's not super invested in this mythology, second one, maybe you don't need to stay for, but anyone that is a Shazam fan, anyone that's liking this world, you got to stick around for both of these scenes. From there, let's move on to the bad. And the big thing that comes to mind here is that I feel like this movie traded in the unique charm of the original film in order to have extra generic big action set pieces. The original movie, part of what made it stand out in this overcrowded genre is that essentially it was big or 13 going on 30 as a superhero movie. You have a child who turns into a superhero that looks like a grown up and you have all the antics that kind of go along with that, him doing silly dances, him using it to go buy beer, all that kind of stuff is what made that movie stand out. And this movie doesn't quite have as much of that. 
it's still funny. It still has some of that, but what you get are a bunch of these huge action set pieces that we've seen in other movies. It tells kind of this big epic blockbuster superhero story with gods coming to the earth to reclaim their power. But to tell that story, it also uses more kind of tropes and cliches of the epic superhero genre. And you'll go, okay, yeah, that's the plot point from The Dark Knight. All right, we're in the third act. Of course, you have to have this happen. And so it just felt a lot more familiar and less distinct. Doesn't mean it was bad. Doesn't mean I didn't have fun with it, but it didn't stand out as much. The stuff that uniquely made the first Shazam interesting isn't as present here and more front and center is the stuff we see in a bunch of other movies in which case your enjoyment of this film is probably directly proportional to how burnt out you are on superhero movies if you just feel like we've had too many of these that you've seen it all before there's probably no reason to rush to go see this movie. If you just love the first Shazam and want kind of more time with these characters and would love to see kind of more big action, you'll probably have a great time with this movie. Another thing to talk about here is that while there's certainly still the family themes in this movie and they find that next step for Billy's kind of journey as being a member of a family, I don't feel like it was nearly as effective in this movie. You can feel they were trying to find something to kind of have that heart and emotion that you had in the first film. And I just don't think there's anything in this movie nearly as powerful as the journey that Billy had in the first movie. That was one of those things that just stood out about the movie. I was like, wow, I didn't really expect to have this like kind of tragic story about this boy and his mother and finding a new family. Wow, that was that was a lot more poignant than I was expecting. This movie tries to have some of that and it, and it does fit, but it's not nearly, nearly as effective as what they did in the first movie. Also, because there's just so much kind of going on here, it feels like a movie that's spread a little bit thin. You've got the Shazam family, you've got them as just their regular family, you've got a sister a hood of villains, you've got a whole bunch of these just mythical artifacts, you've got a whole bunch of mythical creatures, and it just feels like we're spending a little bit of time with all of them, and I'd like to spend more time with all of them at the same time. And to that exact same point, the Shazam family as a whole feels underutilized, where they do this big, gigantic thing that's very cool at the end of the first movie. We have a family of Shazams, and then pretty quickly in this movie, they find ways in order to make it so that it's really still just Billy and it felt underutilized. And in particular characters felt like I would have liked to see a lot more of that. In particular, Adam Brody. This is a guy that, if you don't know this, 15 years ago, he was cast as the Flash in George Miller's Justice League movie. In another timeline, you there might be a world where you played the Flash. Honestly, it was pretty brief. I was out there for a couple weeks and we were doing some table reads. You know, George Miller's a genius. I fully believed in it. I really liked the script. In hindsight and seeing what he did with Mad Max, I only think that more so. This is a guy that's talented enough that they thought, this guy is gonna be in our blockbuster Justice League movie as the Flash. And he's in this movie, you get more of him. He's perfectly cast as a grown-up Freddy, where like you can actually, of our comparisons of kid to grown-up, that's the best one, I think. And you don't get nearly as much of Adam Brody as you'd expect. This guy that almost was the Flash, was gonna be the Flash. You finally put him in a superhero movie and they, they don't do as much of that as, as you'd like. And that, that's frustrating to have someone perfectly cast that's very funny, very entertaining, and then we underutilize him. I was hoping to get more of him. The stuff you get is really good. I was hoping we would get more. Real quick, before I give you my final thoughts on the movie, remember to share your thoughts on the film down below in the comment section. If you've seen it, what did you think about it? If you haven't seen it yet, what's your excitement level for it in particular in light of everything kind of going on with the DCEU? 
Also, last year I did a video where I ranked all 45 DC films, every single one that's been theatrically released. It was this massive project, a ton of fun to watch all the films. You can check that out right up here when this video is over with. In the end, this is a fun but familiar superhero movie. It trades some of the charm of the first film in order to have bigger set pieces and kind of a more expanded mythology. How much you enjoy this film depends on how burnt out you are on superhero movies. If you just loved Shazam and you liked Black Adam and you want more time in that world, you will have a good time at the movies with this film. If you're feeling like you've seen it all before, this probably isn't going to be the superhero movie that wins you back. Overall, I'm gonna give this one a B on the entertainment scale, 7.5 out of 10. And if you're a big fan of Shazam, see it on the big screen. If you're someone burnt out on comic book movies, wait to stream this one. I do think it's good. It's definitely not great. It's fun, but it's not groundbreaking, and it's lost a little bit of that charm. You can check out my ranking of every DC film right over there. Thank you so much for watching, and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.